I am playing the radio DJ. This is the game. New game. Let's do it. Uh oh, the lights out. Hey, man. Um, I have some tape. I'm not afraid of tape. We're gonna rock, record a mixtape. Do 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 do. Please don't murder me. Do do. Please don't murder me. Please don't murder me. Hello. How are you? Can I help? Would you like to duct tape? Oh. Yeah, would you? <laughs> Chill. Chris. Would, would, would you like some duct tape? I guess, I guess they didn't want the duct tape. How's the audio, guys? Is the audio too loud? Because I can turn the audio down a bit. How's the you, audio? Uh, you hear something, Peggy? Huh? Hear what? I thought I heard someone yelling, or... I don't know... How? Forrest, is this a joke? No, I... <laughs> I almost swore I heard something. Oh, and here I was thinking you'd finally started to ease up. You probably just heard turn it up. Hello, can you guys hear me? Can you hear me? Okay, you're live in three, two... Oh, I'm not ready. 189.16. I'm not ready! I wasn't ready after... I was... Damn it. Discover the corpse of a loved one. That's good. Now, Forrest, hit them with the tape. We'll play that scream in just a second. Listen close, and then call in to that's guess that. That's enough dead air already. Just think of a scream and let oh, it rip. Oh, I got it. Did oh, I not? God. Did I not get it? Sorry about that. <laughs> I had to step away there for a second. Listen close, and then call in to guess that scream. Uh, the f the the. Perfect. That's the perfect scream. Well, folks. Can you guess you the have. scream, Bubs? Call in with your guesses, and if you get it right, you could win two tickets to the amazing Maze Maze and one free fried dough. Forest. Thank God I made it through. My name is Leslie Harp. I'm the 911. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. It didn't make it in. Well, Leslie, I guess it must be a slow night for crime. Please, Leslie, you've got I'll level with you. I I'm find this hard to believe, but I'll hear you out. What exactly is going on? Sheriff Matthews is dead. What? Sheriff Matthews is dead? I couldn't get any response from the department. That's never happened before, so I came to the station and... I found him. Oh, God. Poor Sheriff Matthews. Do you know what happened to him? Someone got him. Someone got up very close, and I really don't want to say what they did to him. Did he fight back? I don't know. <laughs> I think he tried. He's gonna blow every He's single surrounded time. by bullet yeah. casings. I think he tried to shoot at whoever it was, but. Boy, well, is anyone else at the state? Anyone who can help you, or, or who might be responsible? No, I checked everywhere. Deputy Martinez is here, but she's knocked out, tied up, and locked in a holding cell. I called you right after I found her. God. Wait. Please don't tell me that this hick town only has two cops. Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> we have three. Oh, good God for that. <laughs> Who's going to man the emergency line? Oh, That's it's not going to be me. Forrest, I've routed all 911 calls to come in to you. <laughs> No, I'm sorry, but this is a terrible idea. What on earth made you think to do that? You're the only person with experience manning a phone line around here. You're the only person equipped for the job. Besides, there are lots of transferable skills between the two. It's like an interview. You ask questions to get information you can use. Right. Keep people talking, you know? I'm listening. Guide the conversation and know when to jump in. You do know that I'm so good at interviews, they sent me from Chicago to Gallows Creek, right? So I've heard. But that doesn't matter. And besides, there are two of you. You can 
talk to each other, discuss ideas, work together. Now I'll be back as soon as I can. Uh oh. What? Oh no. My car! My car is on fire! Oh no. What do you mean it's on fire? How the hell? Did it just go up in smoke? What happened? Wait. What? No. No way. This can't. Oh, Forrest, we have big trouble. What's happening? What's that noise? It sounds like whistling? Whistling? It can't. Like that? Be. Is that kind of whistling? Oh my god. I can see him, but he's dead, right? Right? Yeah. With that mask and how the hell is he? Who, Leslie? Who? The whistling man. The whistling man? Who's the whistling man? He was a serial killer back in the 50s. Wore that mask. Uh huh. But he's dead. He's. What the hell? Oh, God. Do you think. Do you think he attacked Sheriff Matthews and Deputy Martinez? He's coming this way. <laughs> Leslie, stay inside and lock the doors. Right. Shit, and which one's gonna take? take? The taser, the pepper spray, or I don't Well here's the thing, the pepper spray is not gonna work because wearing a mask is not gonna work. The baton is not gonna work when you get yeah, tasers pretty best, isn't it? I mean it's gotta be the taser, right? Got right. it. I'm just going to grab Deputy Martinez. Because the pepper spray if he's got a mask on, it's not gonna spray into his face, is it? Do you hear that? Baton you can't really use with one hand. No, I, I can't hear anything. Exactly, it's gone quiet. No more knocking. Be careful. I don't like it. Me neither. But it's an opening, and I've got to take it. Okay, Deputy Martinez, if you can hear me, it's time to move. Okay. Just lean on me. You sure about this, Leslie? No time like the present, right? So, here we go. Again, you're hooked into dispatch now, so I should be able to radio you when I reach the car. Okay. If I reach it. <sighs> Speak to you soon. Wait. Okay. Jesus! God damn it! Get, get back! Get away from her! Leslie, what's happening? What are you waiting for? Get out of there! Don't worry, Deputy Martinez. We're out of here. Yeah. Yay! Like we did it. Pretty well. Hello, caller. You're live on 189.16. The screen. Hi. Is everything uh, all right? Oh God! Someone's wanking into while they're calling me. Can you please just throw out your meat before you call? Okay. Who is this? Are you, uh, hello? 189.16. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. What? I, I dialed 911. I need the oh, sheriff shit. right oh. away. Right. Okay, no jokes right. aside. Well, I'm filling in for 911. Oh, shit. Okay, I'm ready for this. Um, uh, hi. What's your name? Yeah, how can I help? What's your trouble? I'm sorry, Sandra, but the sheriff is dead. We're trying to get help in from Henderson now. What? God. Listen, you've got to help me then. Don't you answer to for a jazz run? And now some psycho dressed like the whistling man is after me, knife in hand. It's actually happening. Okay. I'm sorry, but you really picked a bad night to go out for a run. I know that now, baby. Jazz ran back mm -hmm. to my car, but I dropped the key somewhere along the way. I never locked the door, so I've got a place to hide, but I can't get moving. Is there anywhere else you can go? 
Do you have any friends nearby? Oh, I'm not going back out there. I. Oh no. I can hear that whistle. You got hot water. Oh me. god, I don't know how to hot water car. If it helps, I've got a toolkit buried beneath my spare sweatbands. I'll call you back when I find it. Okay. I don't know how to hot water car. Chat, how do you The scream. Look, I found it. The scream. I found it. I sorted it out. Just had to do stuff. Be holding up, Sandra. The creep's looking through the parking lot trying to find me. But I've got my tools, and I'm ready to get this hunk of junk moving. How do we start this baby? Um. Put the screwdriver in the ignition and twist clockwise. Here goes, baby. I... Okay. <sighs> Okay. What next? Unscrew the unscrew the unscrew the steering column. Okay, right. I'm going to do this. Chester, Chester. One, two, this is tense. Two. Okay. Um. Oh God. I want these screws. Okay. Covers off. Okay. There's a bunch of wires down here, all paired up, and oh God, my heart is pumping. Tell me exactly what you see. Okay, we can do this. There's a red wire, a blue wire, a yellow wire, a, a green wire, and oh, a brown wire. What's the serial number? What's the serial number on the steering column? The number is five seven six eight nine four three two zero. Uh, okay, Sandra says the number is. Check the serial numbers and strip the whole twist to follow miles together. If there's a four before three and number seven in number. Oh god, this is so fucking complicated. Oh jeez. Okay. If there is if there's no a zero at the end and, and a three doesn't come before six. Very rare. There's a there is a zero at the end. Um There's a zero and three doesn't come for six. There is no s my arm. If it's a, if a three becomes doesn't come for the six, yes, then it's okay. So so for this bit of it, if there's a four before the three, if there's four before the three, so that's that. There's four before the three, and the number seven. And four, no, three, and. I only need a second to figure this out. I'm just so dumb. Uh, if there's a zero at the end, and the three doesn't cover four, 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 if there's a if there's a three, any if there's a oh, I'm just raising this. If there's a six anywhere, but it doesn't start with a five, it does start with a five. Okay, so uh, if there's a three, a four before the three, and number seven in the number. Okay. 
If there's a zero at the end and the three does not come before a six. And three doesn't become before the six. It doesn't, it comes after it. So it's the green one. Red and yellow, red and yellow. Strip and twist together the red and yellow wires. All right. We take the red and the yellow, then we twist and we turn. Oh, perfect. I also see pink and purple wire. What next? Oh, God. Um, strip the purple wire and twist it into the exposed cable. I don't know. Um, I think it's twisted wires, and it? it says twisted wires specifically, doesn't it? Right? Twist the purple. Strip the purple wires. Rough against the twisted wires. Strip the purple wire and brush it. Please tell me she's not dead or something. Okay. Nice. We did it. We did it, chat. We got him. Fantastic work, baby. Anytime you want to come down to the jazz studio, you get in for free. This is Forrest Nash, host of 189.16, The Scream. And tonight's 911 stand in. Hey, Forrest. My name is Brian. Uh, Brian Hi, Brian. Ponte. How can I, how can I help you, Brian? Brian Ponty's Pizza. How can I help you, Brian? Hello. Hello, Brian Ponty of Ponty's Pizza. What have you got to say about what's happening? Oh, I'm so happy that that Deputy Martinez survived. I've seen her a lot over the years down here at Ponty's Pizza. Are you fucking, oh, are you okay. fucking self-promoting? Really are you actually self-promoting? Uh, as a thanks for all you did there. I just wanted to tell you that I'm sending you some coupons for free pizza here at Ponty's <laughs> Pizza. Wow, Brian. That's really good of you. You really don't have to, though. Oh, it's the least I can do. And if you like it, well, you're in luck because we're always running great deals. We'll have you eating for pennies. Uh -huh. Sounds great, bro. And let me tell you, the pizza we have He's is fucking a says he's <laughs> oh, 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 no, oh, no, no, no. Poor choice of words tonight, I guess. Yeah, that didn't come out great. I'm sorry, Forrest. Well, I just hope I didn't put you or anyone else of coming on down to Ponty's Pizza. We've got a great special this weekend. Our famous beer and pizza deal. Wait a minute. Come on down to Ponty's Pizza this weekend. Boo. You've just got the We're booing you off stage. Boo. Oh, you're just calling in to advertise your show. Boo him off the stage. Peggy, hang up on him. Done. Thanks. Oh, real quick, before I forget, it's probably time we played a paid ad. Now, a word from our sponsors. You know how to play an ad, right? The world famous annual sure. Dallas Creek Harvest Done. Festival is back! <laughs> we got it all out on Giblet Field. We got the Little Miss Harvest Pageant, Princess Harvest Pageant, Harvest Queen Pageant, Cotton Candy, Corn Dogs, Cornhole, Corn on the Cob, Crokinole, Country Music, Can Jam, Jams, Jellies, Jamborees, Juggling, Roller Rickies, Roller Disco <laughs> Lessons. <laughs> Praying. We got baby crawling, balloon popping, balloons for sale, beard contest, horseshoes, hayride, hay toss, hey you there, safety donkeys and ponies, apple bobbing, firearm, fireworks, funnel cakes, fried dough, sheets, bitten, sand licking, cracker cramming, and cat shop. 
Okay, Man, get it. Fake tattoos, fake tattoos, <laughs> puppets, pet and zoo, amazing maze, maze, square dance, and story swap, and spell and bee, quilt and bee, and sew and circle, pie eating, lawnmower racing, hot dog eating contest, Fox. flower contest, and of course our famous <laughs> gourd measure off. The festival is brought to you by Mayor Linda Cartwright, sponsored by Gallows and Sons Factory, and dedicated to the memory of Garrett Miley, tragically taken from us last festival. To the scream with me, Boris Nash. Yeah, Leslie. This is Maurice Russell from the Gallows Reporter. I'm okay. at the office. This guy just broke in downstairs and... Wait. Maurice <laughs> Nash? I want to speak to 911. Put Leslie on. What? God, another oh, one? Oh, no. I am 911. Uh, at least for tonight, anyway. Damn it, son. I don't care who you are. Okay. Just put me on with Sheriff... Sheriff Matthews is dead. Dead? What happened? Did you witness the incident? Every fucking time. Are you going to do never an gets old. for the reporter? I can cite you as an anonymous source. I just every time someone dies, it's like, wah, wah, wah. Never mind that. Tell me what's happening there. You said there's been a break in? That's nothing to get worked up about. Some idiot kid just broke in. Dressed as the whistling man. <laughs> Teen. They get worse every year. It's on my hook. In shock. And this punk wasn't even a disappointing twinkle in his daddy's eye when Edward Marshall Mooney stalked the town. But I was there. I covered it. Maurice, I don't know what's going on, but he's back. The whistling uh, man is back. Don't be an ass, Nash. Every happens <laughs> they think it's funny not a big deal old man but they didn't live through the terror 30 years ago anyway i know for a fact edward marshall mooney is dead i don't know who i'm looking at on the security monitor but if he killed sheriff matthews where are you now i'm in the boardroom Upstairs. Oh god, no, this has to say. Cameras all around oh, jeez. Okay. You can watch them on any TV set here. Set in the border. Think you might be up for fighting the whistling man? Son, I am 55 years I'm old. I'm sorry. <laughs> if this freak killed Sheriff Matthews, <laughs> I don't like my chances. Maurice, is there any way you can get out of there? Ah, I sure as shit hope so, kid. But I'm not sure how I'm going to do it. That crash you heard was him tipping over my okay. filing cabinets. He's blocking the stairs. Okay. I'm guessing the stairs are the only way out. That's right. And it would take me a good few minutes to move those cabinets. We need to do something. But what? All we can do from here is... Forrest, I think I've got it. Why don't we call the killer? They'd have a bunch of phones set up across the office. Right. In different rooms with different extensions. So we call one of them. Draw, draw the killer, the killer, killer. away. Ah, I like thinking. I find all this time. That could work. That could work. Exactly. It's worth a shot. I can hear you, you know. The son of a bitch hasn't killed me yet. Sorry, Maurice. Peggy and I were just trying to figure out. You realize how stupid that plan Well, listen, have you got a better right? idea? Fuck with. For that to be successful, you're going to need every phone extension. Plus, a plan of the entire office floor. All delivered while the killer is en route. What do you want me to do? Thank God I've what do you want me to do? Cool under pressure. Don't go anywhere. Oh, my God, this guy. Any idea what you'll say to draw the killer in? I'm gonna do my best impersonation of Maurice. I think that'll draw the killer in. What's your Mr. Russell impression? I think I gave that mask freak to slip. What a great plan this is, Pearl. Uh, I'll give you an A for effort. Ooh, call coming in. Here we go. I'm here. The radio's set up in the secret archive. Just give me the signal, and I'll turn it all the way up. Where will you hide in the meantime? I. Uh, uh, Good question. Okay. It's under my desk, but uh, you can see under it. I've got a big cabinet, 
But uh, that'll take me a second to get into. Anywhere else? Uh, not really. There's the secret archive itself, but uh, that's where the kill is going. Okay. I can try the cubicles, but they're pretty far away. Your um. judgment has kept me alive so Okay, well, I don't think the cubicles is you got locked the door. You can't hide in the desk, hide in your cabinet. Hide in your cabinet. All right. Well, hide in the cabinet. This is it. <laughs> I'm going to go turn the radio up to full blast now. Don't say anything until I've had time to hide. You need to be Got close, it. but not we too close. We know the plan. You can trust us. Here we go. I want to, I want to play it so bad. I want to play the voice so bad. I want to play something. I think it should be safe now, Forrest. That's it. No more hiding. I'm a tough old man. I've been on the beat longer than you've been alive. Come on down, <laughs> whistling man. Come and get a knuckle sandwich. <laughs> Did it work? Listeners, this is Forrest Nash of 189.16, The Scream. And if you've just tuned in... See you in hell, kid! We've just locked up The Whistling Man. Yes. I did it! Forrest, you beautiful bastard! <laughs> I can't believe that actually worked! Neither can I. If I'm being honest, I can't believe it either. I can't believe it worked. Thank God, it's over! I'll be off now. Gotta get out of here. Write up a few notes. Call a few friends. I feel safer waiting for the cops to come grab this freak with some company. Hey, maybe you and me could do an interview tomorrow for the Gallows Reporter. You're welcome. I'll think about it. Let's see what tomorrow brings. I'll take that as a yes. Talk to you soon. Bye. There we are, folks. One eighty nine point six dollars. One eighty nine point six dollars. Scream. Scream with Ash. Shut up and listen to me. Oh, Mr. Mr. Russell, what's wrong? Are you okay? I said, listen. He's gone. Oh, oh God, he is. Gone. he is. So the one who left the cassette, he really did it. You mean you knew he escaped? And you didn't tell me! We only just found out. We weren't even sure it was him. Mr. Russell, where are you now? What happened? Well, after our call, I cleared the stairs and went home. I phoned some buddies. We came back here to keep watch. Then what happened? I'm getting to that. We came back here. Uh -huh. The door was shut, just as I left it. We had a couple of drinks and, well... There was a bunch of us, and we were all armed. They thought we could teach the freak a lesson before the cops got him. Did you let him escape? Of course we didn't. I demand you retract that accusation. Mm -hmm. Damn it, Maurice. Just tell me what happened with this plan of yours. This was not my idea. The guys just grabbed their weapons and unlocked the door. I braced myself and... Then? Then nothing. The room was empty. The door was still locked. How the hell did he get out? Are you sure it was still locked? I'm telling you, it was locked. Oh my no God. way out of there. None. Maybe. I mean, I know it's crazy, but if he's back from the dead, then... Do you think he's some kind of ghost, Peggy? It would explain things. I mean, how do we know he's not? There's no way. Oh, did you say something, Maurice? Baloney. I said baloney. Look, I don't want anything more to do with this. I'm clearing okay. out a dodge. And I recommend you and everyone listening do the same. This seems really spooked. Wouldn't you be if you got attacked by a serial killer who turned out to be a demonic spirit? 
Sure. He's not a demon, Peggy. Yeah, you're probably right. But what do we do now? I don't know. I really hope it's nothing serious. Hello. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Evening, caller. This is Forrest Nash, host of 189.16, The Scream. And tonight's 911 stand in. This is Murphy! Murphy. Hi, <laughs> Murphy. Murphy, uh, what have you got for oh, us tonight? Oh, okay, Murphy. Things, Forrest. First, happy birthday to my son. Hey, happy birthday to your son. He's free today. And man, being his daddy has changed my life. I've learned how to live. How to laugh. Most importantly, how to love. Aww. Aww, happy birthday, Fernando. Happy birthday, Fernando. Thanks. And now, my other thing. I'm putting the word out to this so called killer. You think you're tough, huh? Big man with a big knife, huh? Ruben, come face me. A true warrior at the Gallows Waste Disposal Plant. Guess what? Are you kick his ass, Murphy? You gonna kick his ass, you kick, Murphy? You gonna kick his ass? God damn right! I'm gonna kick his ass! Hell yeah! I got all the tapes in Master Robbie's Dojo series. Kick his ass, man. So get ready, whistling man. You just let loose the junkyard dog. <laughs> Oh no. <sighs> and there he goes. Ladies and gentlemen, keep your fingers crossed for Murphy as he tries to become our hometown hero. <sighs> anyway, we'll be right back after this commercial. Ancient wisdom. Do you want to double your power? Are you ready to unlock your inner warrior? Hell yeah, I am. Well, let's go. Then step into Master Robbie's deadly dojo of Kung Rate and receive direct by video warrior instruction from me, Master Robbie. You will learn the four qualities of an ultimate conqueror the power of the alligator, the discipline of the tarantula, the speed of the tuna, the poise of the scorpion, and the wisdom of the bullfrog. Using classified <laughs> techniques, I'll unlock your inner chi after only five 30 minute video sessions. 35? Ultimate power and wisdom can be yours now for the low, low price of only $24.99. Call 555-7861 USA to take your first step to becoming a champion. Never forget the element of surprise! If you buy today, you'll receive two additional <laughs> ready for VHS tapes. I was not ready for it. And Hello? Who is this? Are you okay? Do you need help? Forrest? He called me? That horrible whistling down the phone. He's coming for me? Jesus. Okay, listen, Collar. Don't panic. We've done this a few times now. We can help you. A few times already? So, you saved them, or...? We sure did. You're in safe hands. Yeah, we did. We're gonna help you. Can you tell me your name, Collar? I'm Dr. Sullivan of Virginia. Sorry. Take some deep breaths, Virginia. You're gonna be okay. Okay. Please don't let me die. I won't. Just calm down. Tell me where you are right now. What's your address? I'm... I'm... Oh, God. Is there a neighbor you can call for help? You live by a frat house. Yes, they're having a party. Oh God! Get the frat the boys. Fine. Get the frat boys to protect you. They're getting wasted, and I'm about to get. Oh God! Virginia, what's the name of the frat? It's. Oh God! I can't think. I, I can't. 
any idea what the frat might be? If I knew where she was, I might know, but... <laughs> the takeout! If we can get takeout to the frat, we can get a message to them to go and help. Virginia, who did they order takeout from? I don't know. Auntie's Pizza! Don't worry. We'll figure it out. Where's Ponty's Pizza? Where's Ponty's well, Pizza? Folks, seems like our Virginia hung up. While we try to figure out what takeout to order, here's some music for your own midnight snacks. Let Storm Riders take you on a rock and roll ride with the Glam Jam. The Glam Jam. Peggy, what places do takeout in Gallows Creek? Off the top of my head? Uh, well... There's the barbecue place, Grilling Spree, and you can order from Chalupa Cabras. Oh, and of course we have Ponte's Pizza. That's it, I think. All right. We'll call each place and ask who they deliver to tonight. That's not going to work. Takeout client privilege. What? There was a lot of competition back in the day. Things got ugly. It's a long story. But what we can do is this. We figure out where the frat boys order from, call the takeout pretending to be from the frat, place an order, and include a note asking them to call the station. <sighs> There's no other way, is there? Not that I can see. Okay. Well, let's not waste any time then. That's oh. the spirit. Yeah. Uh, Ponty's Pizza. Yeah, call Ponty's Pizza. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. <laughs> Ponty's Pizza is on the line. Ponty's Pizza, may I take your order? Fratman calling. <laughs> we have a major need of foods for dudes. <laughs> uh, may I take your order? I garlic, bread. garlic bread. Oh, I need the bread. Oh, I need the bread. <laughs> Uh, same place as before, you know. The frat house. Got it. And we'll have that over the right away. Oh, and, and one more thing. Can you add a note to the order that says to call KFAM? KFAM? Oh, 16. Oh, no, the killer's in the door. <laughs> this is the pie boy. Woo! Bernie has arrived. Yeah. Oh, thank God. He's good. And... Oh. oh, is that you, Radio Man? Don't worry. We brought the beer. Good times are here. I could use a drink. Thank you, Forrest. The party boy saved the day. You're welcome, Virginia. <laughs> and thank you to Plunker and his fraternity brothers. Some heroes wear capes, some wear sheets as togas. And some are barbarians. Hey Forrest. This game did is you great. Hear what Virginia said earlier? What was that all about? Clive, I didn't talk. Do you know what she meant? There's a janitor here at the station named Clive, but your guess is as good as mine. Alright, folks. Seems we Someone may have a save you. If any of you know a suspicious Clive, then please. Call in. It could save lives. In the meantime, looks like we have another caller. Okay. Hello. Uh, when you're ready, shut the music off. Hello, caller. You're live on the screen. With me, Forrest Nash. It's great to speak with you, Forrest. Okay. As a local small business owner, oh, I find this all horrible. Oh, no. The uh, I can't believe it. Clive saves lives. I hear you there. It's a scary time for everyone in Gallows Creek. How are you holding up? You somewhere safe tonight? Yes, Forrest, I am. I'm here at work in my small business. It's a safe it's family. A, is this Ponty? Place. Ponty, is this you? It, Ponty, is this you? Good for you, friend. Good for you, friend. I'm glad you're keeping safe and busy. 
You must really, you love must your work. really, really love your work. Oh, I do. My small business really is my whole world. Are you Ponty? What's your small <laughs> business? <laughs> oh, well, I'm not. It's fucking Ponty, isn't it? Promotion, it's Ponty. Since you ask, it's Ponty's Pizza! The best and only pizza place in town! <laughs> Come on down! I get you some of the best. What was I like, guys? God damn it, Ponty, no! No free ads! Gene Stein, and I've got a heart full of love for Oh my god. I'm hanging Cringe. out in the middle of the maze. Cringe. Maze, listening oh. to your show. Why are you in the middle of the maze? Oh. And waiting for her. You got a special lady coming out to see you. Oh. Yeah. Molly. We planned to get lost in the maze. Oh maze god. We should take our first journey Why? into the love Why? Oh god, don't say it like that! I thought she'd be here an hour ago. And don't call it the love lab, bro. How cool you play it. I thought you were the perfect guy to ask. Should I call her up and ask if she's coming or wait and see? For real, kid? If you've been listening all night, do you really need to ask me? Yes, that's why I'm calling. Eugene, you really need to go home to your parents. My parents are dead, actually. <laughs> Jesus uh, Christ. Oh, jeez. Oh, fuck yeah, no. Uh, I guess it's not the night. Oof. Hang on. We hear some rustling. I guess she came after all. Molly! I'm in the middle! Oh, it's the whistling man, isn't it? It'll take a little while to get here, but uh, thanks again, Forrest. Good talk. Yeah. Oh, wait a second. Molly can't whistle. <laughs> no, no, this is supposed to be the best night of my life. Wait a minute, she can't whistle. The maze maze. Eugene, you're back on air. I'm lost, Forrest. I just ran and I I don't know where I am. I'm at a crossroad. Facing a tractor statue. There are hay bales painted gold on my right. Go left. Go left. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, uh, I went left. Then tried a right. I have a pink statue in front of me and a creepy rocking horse on my left. There's a pig statue in front of him, which is number three. He needs to go back, doesn't he? Yeah. Go backwards. Crossroads, pitchfork statues ahead. Uh, bye. Go left. Go left. Then it's right. Go right. Ah! Just past the corn silo. Oh, I didn't see anything else. <laughs> okay. 
Now it should be... He's at the corn silo, which is number 9. So I said he just went past the corn silo. So which way should I go now, Bebs? You're saying right? Are you sure? Are you sure? Because I'm not sure. It's not forward anyway, we know that. I should put it on number 10. I, I see it! Oh, I'm out! And my bike's still here! Yay, we did it. Oh, thank God! Thank you, Babs. Thank you, Forrest! I love you, Molly! Oh. That was intense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, Forrest. Do you know what the Grill Reaper's favorite grilling spree order is? Uh, I have a feeling you're gonna tell me. Spare ribs. Uh, <laughs> Just get me back on the air. And we're back. We got a caller. You know what to do. Caller on line one. Yo. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. <sighs> Hello, caller. Who is this? I need the police. I'm police. Boris Nash. I, <clears throat> I'm standing in for 911 tonight. What, what's wrong? There's a guy hunting me and my friends. I, I think he's killed some of them already. <coughs> oh no! He's just outside. I can see him from up here. God damn it! He's just a kid. Where are you? Are, are you somewhere safe? Oh my god, oh my god! Well, stay with me, kid, focus. I, I can't do this! Yes, you can, focus. Tell me, what's your name? Sweetie, you can do it. What's your name? Carrie. Good, good, Carrie, listen to me. We're gonna get you out of there, all right? Okay. Now, where are you? The old murder house. Upstairs. I'm at the end of a hall. There's, there's a bathroom, a couple bedrooms, a closet. Oh, he's coming. Where should I go? Um. Go to the bathroom. Okay, I'll... Did I lose somebody? Forest! <laughs> oh my god, that was a fucking prank. I genuinely was like, oh no, I've lost what? somebody. What? What? Are you Are you kidding me? Okay, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> oh, who's on the phone, Carrie? The cops? It's just a joke. Wait, isn't that Jimmy? That wasn't funny, you sicko! Of course I called the cops, but, but some guy just answered instead. What guy? Forrest Nash. What the hell are you all doing? It's prank night, old man. We're just having fun. That's the kid. The kid who called in earlier pretending to be the whistling man. That's it. I'm out of here. Jimmy, everyone, it's really not safe to be out, please. Go home. Go home. And waste whistling night? <laughs> no way. That little idiot. Whistling night? It's a stupid tradition. It's 
especially stupid since that one kid died back in... <sighs> Would you take off that stupid mask if it's hard to breathe? Who's under there anyway? Is that you? Oh that... no. Idiot. Seth is right next to you. Oh no. That's, uh... uh... Wait. Oh no. Hold oh, up. Who are you? Oh no, I'm dead. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Everyone, get inside! Oh, holy shit. You two, Thor, Scott, Heather, you barricade the back. As long as he's out there and we're in, we're safe, right? You buy time, but not much. Forrest, we have to. Heather, I already called the cops. Forrest picked up. He's the best we're gonna get. Who is with you, Carrie? My friend. We drove out to the old murder house and... Oh, of course! The van! Who's got the keys? Jimmy had them. Oh, Jimmy. <laughs> focus. Stay focused, Carrie. Focus. We'll figure something out. Between all of you, there's got to be a way to beat this. Just sit tight, okay? Heather, shut up. If we do that, we're going to get killed. <sighs> if only Jeannie were here. Jeannie? Jeannie McPherson? Our intern Jeannie? Yes. She's my best friend and the smartest one out of all of us. She <laughs> stayed in tonight. Force, <laughs> listen. We'll see what we can come up with, and, uh... What? Scott, you're not any good at... And... No, no, Chad. Out of all of us, you're not the one to... Oh. I did the she, anyway. Everything okay? No. We, uh... <sighs> We're figuring out a plan, but everyone's volunteering to do things they're just bad at. I think we can figure out what to do, but I don't think we can agree on who should do what. I think you'll have to be. Okay. Or else these idiots are gonna get us killed. But okay. I shut up, you Ugh. Forrest, I'll call you back. But I don't know anything about your friends. Damn. Okay. Huh? What? It won't stay open. I'll hold it. You drive through. Carrie! What was that? I think I I think I fucked it up somehow. But there was something about holding the gate open. What was that? Let me go. Let's go. Just drive. Oh my god. Like, I don't think I can put that any differently. Oh, she's alive! She's oh my there. god! Carrie. Oh, Carrie! Oh Just my god! What the? Oh, you can't! You can't do that to me! That's so mean! I thought I'd fucked it up! Oh my god! Chat, I thought I fucked it up, guys! I thought I fucked it up. I don't understand? Thank God you're okay. Can you get somewhere safe? Oh. It was your plan, Carrie, and it was a great plan. Zero through to 189.16. The screen. What's your emergency? Hello again, Forrest. Oh, that call with the teens was awful. Those poor yep. kids. Still, I'm, I'm glad the girl didn't get hurt. Thanks for your concern. Are you in trouble? What's on your mind? I wanted to ask you again to play my song for. Oh, this is Dawn again. Your name was Dawn, you, right? you just sound really I weird. I just... Yes. Oh, well remembered. My name is Dawn. You I sound really weird. I don't know. Forest. Chad, does she not sound like really weird? Like, she's very insistent about me playing this one song. 
that's outside. There's a serial killer on the loose. The raid, the CD is outside, but she's very insistent that I go out and pick it. That's just really weird. You know, the one that Peggy said she threw outside the window? You do. I think I know who's going to be next. I think what? you know, I think you know who's going to be next cuz I think here's my theory. You're the killer. Are you serious? Play my song, Forest, and you'll find out. I don't like it. I don't blight well, but Here's some music for you while I think things over. I don't know. Hang on. We're getting a call. Okay. Hello? Chuck? Chuck! Oh, I think I escaped him. The whole goddamn gas station's gone up. Is anyone hurt? I don't think so. I got everyone to follow me out. The town's only ambulance oh, was blown the, to uh, hell, the only ambulance? Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. Damn it, that fireball threw me. The the don't hospital. you know, Babs? Chat. Yeah, the I'm only ambulance. Forest, man. I, I found a police report. Mentions a friend from earlier, Sandra Sharp. Sandra, the jazz runner. That's right. She found George's body washed up at the reservoir. The reservoir? Yeah. What's strange about but that? But he died in the lake. Cuts from running through foliage, right? Right. But there's no forest around there. Also, how did it wash up at the reservoir? What do you mean? Reservoirs don't have tides. But that's what the police report said. Yeah, it's a big cover up. Not possible though. I did a school project on reservoirs and got an A. But yeah, not important right now. The, there's the, 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 the this is a big cover up. What are you suggesting then? That the body was originally found somewhere other than what the report suggests. That the sheriff tried to cover it up but accidentally let something slip? Something like that. I think. Well, Sheriff Matthews wrote the report. If he hadn't been eviscerated, we could have asked him. True. But Sandra is still alive. Once we're done down here, we should give her a call. In another tape, the coroner comes to the same conclusion as I did. Yeah. George was running from something. Maybe an animal? Maybe. But then there's this next bit, where the coroner thinks he was moved post-death. Yeah, it's a big cover-up. At the end of the tape, someone burst in and demanded Virginia stop recording. I... I think it was Clive. This is starting to make sense now. This... This is a conspiracy to cover up what happened to George. But who... Okay. Do you think you found everything? I think so. Forrest, what's going on here? Someone wanted that boy's death to seem like an accident. And they hired Clive to make it look that way. Uh, come back upstairs when you're ready. Yeah. We need to figure out our next step. Buzz, I think I think we cracked the code. Do you know what I mean? I think we've cracked the code, chat. Thank God you're back, Forrest. Everything. I've been working. I was out following a lead, trying to work out who would be next. After. And what happened? And I started to feel like I was being followed. Yeah, you're the I killer, came back aren't you? To my apartment building. But this newfangled security system has me locked out. I need you to help me get inside. Uh, you don't you have a key, key to get in? Only for the apartment door. The front gate requires an entry code. Well, surely you know the code, the right? Is electronic, I guess. If you live there, you'd I know the code. That code to get inside. You'd Which know the code. What do you live in? Maybe one of our listeners lives there too. It's the new Woodside apartment. Sounds like a prime piece of the sound really carries at night. <laughs> Shit. The dog. <gasps> is that a neighbor's dog? The dog. Yes, it is. Boy, I wish he'd muzzle that thing and oh. And now he's blasting David Scopo out of his window. This night can't get any. This man is coming down the street. For that security system, or I'm gonna die. I don't believe you. 
What's your neighbor's name? Yeah, what's your neighbor's I don't name? I know my neighbors, remember? Please, I need to get in. I don't buy it. It's thus. What's the name of the security system? Uh, there's a sticker on the box. It says Starling Security 4000. Am I wrong, chat? And it looks like it wants a, a six digit number. <sighs> we'll see what. Thank you, Forrest. Yeah, of course. Don't worry, Don. Thank you, Forrest. I knew I could count on you. I'll sit out of sight. Call me back soon. All right, folks. Here's a little tune for you all to enjoy while I try to break Dawn into her apartment. You were pretty quiet. Yeah, there, it seems suspicious, doesn't it? Forrest, was it just me or was there something? Yeah, it, it wasn't just you. Something was. Weird it was really weird. That. Yeah. Well, tell you what, we have a Starling 4000 or whatever here at KFAM. Clive bought one for the station. Maybe we can find something to help. Well, I'm not sure who, but to help someone. Starling 4000. It's like I already had user it. User manual. Ah, these codes. Do you think I should set Do you think I should the alarm okay. off? So she's locked out. If you say so. Line one. Whenever you're ready. <laughs> Don, are you there? This is Forrest Nash from 189.16, The Stream. Oh, thank God you're back. I'm so afraid. What's the code to the gate? The code is 191519. Thank you, Forrest. Yeah, that's very strange and sus. Yeah. She? She is the killer. I knew it. I called it. I said she was the killer. Yeah, stay out! Nobody disrespects the sanctity of the break! Don't ever come back here again! I'm calling the cops! Thank God. Hello? Is someone there? Ricky, get back inside and turn on the radio. Whoever that was, she was trying to break into the ring. She? Forrest, man, you got no idea. That was him. That was the whistling man. The alarm gave me just enough time to get my rifle. I don't like hurting folk, but I can't let anything happen to Maxie. He's my best friend, you know? I... Listen, man, I'm heading back inside. I'm gonna barricade that window. My man, thank you. You and Peggy can skate for free whenever you want, forever. That's a done deal. I... Thanks, Ricky. Can't yeah. wait. You got it. Talk to you soon. Oh. Okay, Gallows mm -hmm. Creek. Here's some music while we process what just happened. So the whistling man is a, is woman, a woman. woman? Yeah. Yeah, I went down a while ago. <laughs> Not just a fucking humble brag, but yeah, I just I figured out about uh, 20, 30 minutes ago, but yeah, yeah sure. I worked it out a while ago. Yeah, sure, Forrest. You just never mentioned I fucking did! She called yeah, yeah. up. You spoke to her multiple times. He's already here, isn't he? Uh-oh, the door's open. Oh, no. oh, no. Peggy! Where'd you go? Oh, I'm locked in. What the... Hello. No way. This can't be happening. A call. Where's Peggy, Don? Have some patience, Forrest. It's almost the end of the night. Almost well, the end of the show. Yeah, it's the end. Where, where is she? It's not where is she? Yet. We've got a little time still. So let's make the most of it. All right. All right. Let's. I'm happy to hear that. <laughs> huh? 
I thought we'd end tonight's Whistling Man special with a special guest. The one who started it all. Oh, let me take that out of your mouth. And... You crazy bitch! Let me go! Welcome to the air, Mr. Teddy Gallows Jr. Wait. Wait, what? It's all gonna come out tonight, Teddy. Teddy is involved? Daddy and his money saved you 20 years ago. Oh, no. Wait, where the hell is Teddy? How, how are you talking to him if you're here with me? Because I'm not there with you, Forrest. There is two killers. Teddy. I said that. He says where that is. Well, he knows he'll get it. Then who's it? Then who am I looking at? Forrest Nash, let me introduce you and all of Gallows Creek to my boy. Henry Barrow. Your son? You mean you... Wait, did, did he? Yeah. Yes, Forrest. He and I had a son. Of course. That's how he got out. That's how he got out the locker. That's how he got out of the room. How he escaped the office. He escaped the secret archives in the newspaper yeah. office. And Murphy, he, he was right, wasn't he? He did fight a man. He did. I taught my boy to never run away from a fight. Hang on. Did you say Barrel? That... Are you... Let me just get this mask off. Yeah. An uncomfortable thing. No wonder Mooney went crazy wearing this. Marie. Marie Campbell? George's old girl. Oh, well, it sure has been years since I last saw. Oh, God damn it. What, Teddy? Quiet if I were you, Teddy. But I... I'd listen to Forrest. <laughs> Everyone's gonna know now what Teddy did. What did he do? He killed George that night. Well, he was the prank he, uh... 20 he... years ago. You're gonna talk when I talk to you, and not a moment before. Meanwhile, Forrest, I'm gonna give you the chance to talk. You're gonna okay. help me reveal what really happened to George all those years ago. I'll do it. Okay, Marie. I'll do it. Good. Then let's talk about the night George was murdered. Murdered? Uh, listen, I... Teddy, you need to shut up. what happened to George 20 years ago and that's why I want you to interview us I do that. all right keep him talking thank you I want you to help me and Teddy tell the story Forrest do a good job and hell you might be the only one to leave here alive <laughs> Need to drag this out. If I can buy Leslie time to get back to Gallows Creek, yeah. And if yeah, I can buy find him. out where Marie is, then this can end. Teddy, we'll start with you. Just uh, talk me through what happened that night. How did it start? How would I know? It was 20 years ago. Hit him. Hit him again, Marie. Hit him. <laughs> coming up and when I saw the date it was scheduled for I had an idea for a way we could prank the new guys I understand that kids in Gallows Creek know tonight as whistling night I'm guessing that's what you mean well we didn't have a name for it then it was just the night that Mooney went missing mm -hmm. but Whistling yeah. night is what they'd call it later. Wait. You mean this was the first whistling night? I, uh... Yeah. Keep talking, Teddy. We 
went up near Whistling Point. Uh, God, who was there? Me, Jason, and George, of course. Mm -hmm. But George didn't come alone. He brought Marie. And Roller Ricky, he was there too, wasn't he? Yes, Ricky was there too. Runner Ricky, yep. our wide receiver. I helped him off the bottle, you know, because I'm a decent man. Yeah. Is that so? Yes, it is. He came apart one day. Some people do. He had some issues. Wasn't stable. Yeah. I didn't want him to hurt his chances in life, so I helped him keep himself together. Right. You were afraid he would talk about that night, weren't you? Keep talking. About midway through the night, we put the prank into action. We looked up at the trees and saw Jason there, bloody, like he'd just been stabbed. Yeah. And the whistling man. and I and Ricky we got left behind but Ricky was in on it too I know he was he and Teddy were as close as anybody mm. Teddy must have told him the plan no Marie you're wrong Ricky didn't know what did you miss that part of the broadcast I spoke to him earlier he had no idea what was happening yeah he said he was as terrified as exactly anybody. isn't that right Teddy you didn't tell him, did you? Ricky never could keep his mouth shut. If we told him, he would have given everything away. But he... Well... Yeah. I'm getting inside the head. I'm sucking him out. Enough to tell anybody about it afterwards. I'm sucking you out. I'm sucking you out. It was just a stupid prank. Hit him again. Hit him again, Marie. And so tonight you stabbed him for real? It's the role he wanted to play. Jason's still alive, Marie. He was with a friend. We talked her through how to stop the bleeding and got him professional help just in time. Oh. Well, shame he didn't have the good sense yeah, to well, die that's earlier. unfortunate. Enough about him. Yeah, and then somehow he, we got separated in he, the woods. I ended up near the bottom of whistling for me. And when I noticed George wasn't with me, I panicked. And then I don't know how he snuck up on me, but the whistling man grabs me. I scream. And he starts laughing. Tell me it's it's just a joke. I can stall for time here. How did you feel in that moment? I felt like nothing was real. Yeah. I felt small and confused. And who was under the mask, Murray? Who was the whistling man? It was Chuck. Chuck Brody. Yeah, we talked to Chuck, didn't we? Away. But then he stops. And he's looking up at the top of Whistling Point. What was he looking at? What was he looking at? <laughs> Teddy, what happened next? Nothing. I mean, it was just... Teddy! George fell off yeah. whistling point. Why'd he fall, Teddy? You just... You pushed him. You were up there. You were dressed as the whistling man too, and I didn't push him. God damn it! I just chased him up there, and he kept backing up. When I saw he was about to go over, I reached out. That's what you saw. You liar! It's not my fault. He didn't know it was. Wow, a joke. Teddy, you're a fucking piece if of he shit. Had any brains, he would have realized. Ugh. Bitch. No one's going to believe this. After all, you did. I'll believe it. 
I believe her. You... What? Why else cover it up? My future mm. was at stake. I, Ash, yep. You know what it's like. People like us. You are all these prick. You disgust me. Look at all your dead roads. I'm not justifying the murder, met. but she did end the murder she done. But Teddy is just like. It was just a stupid joke. Gone wrong. He has no regret. So my father sent Clive out to clean it up. Why should a blip? Oh no. Ooh, uh, that's a bad word to say. George was a blip. Ooh. He wasn't a blip, Marie. His father covered it up from there. I searched for George's body all night. But... Sandra found him the next morning while out jazz running. She found him in the river, but she lied about that to protect Teddy. She said something about her rent going up, unless she... Teddy. Did your father own Sandra oh, Sharp's dance no. studio? It's Gallows Creek, not Sharp Creek. I'd answer the question if I were you, Teddy. Yes, okay. We own the most of the town. That's it, then. Your father was going to run her out of business, unless she lied and said she found him in the reservoir instead of the river. What my father did in his business dealings is nothing to do with me. The false reports. That's why you killed Sheriff Matthews, too, isn't it, Maria? Not just to get him out of the way, but... Revenge. Everyone was in on it, Forrest. Even the coroner wrote a fake report. Said George was drinking. That he just got himself into trouble. Yeah. And... Fake report? Uh, I only heard the tapes. You'd be disgusted by it. For all it's worth, Virginia didn't have much of a choice. She had a sick sister whose treatments she couldn't afford. She played along with the gallows to save her sister's life. And her own. Even... even still, she should have told the truth. I did my part. I tried everything I could think of. I even went to the newspaper, but no! That coward killed the story. No. We'll take care of Maurice Russell later. You've been through hell, Marie. Yeah, I, I don't blame you at all. Holding. Where did you meet him? Peggy? Peggy? Teddy? You've got to help me. I... Quiet. You'll talk more later. Now I have to talk to someone who mattered more than you ever did. Peggy. It's been so long since I've seen your face. I worried you wouldn't come. Marie! Oh my god. I thought you... And here I was. Happy birthday, Peg, from Love sister. M. The sisters! Forrest seems lost for words. Your sisters! Let me explain, Peggy. Earlier, while you were speaking to Jason, I got a call. Do you remember? Well, it was from Don. She said that my sister Marie was there that night George died. Your sister. I should come to the gym for a reunion. And when you walked in, you found out that my sister is the whistling. Good to see you too, Peggy. Why didn't you tell me any of this? She said that it was. 
was my last chance to see my sister. Mm -hmm. I knew if I told you, you'd try to stop me or come with me when we need you on the radio. And I just... I'm sorry. This has to be a lot for you. I just... What happened to you, Marie? You just disappeared one day. Yes, this is... I was thrown out, Peggy. I begged Mom and Dad to do something about what happened that night. But did they care? No. Stay quiet. They only cared when they learned I'd been George. And... Marie, I'm so sorry. I never knew. It's not your fault. Really, it's Mom and Dad I should be seeing right now. But since they're gone, well... I'll have to settle for the next best thing. I... Wait. Is that why you went after that kid in the maze maze? Gene Stein? Because his parents? That's right. Oh, because they're dead, aren't they? They got themselves killed in a Yeah, the parents were dead, weren't they? And since only their child was oh, left. Murray, please. Mom and Dad are gone. Besides, you forgot me. Just like the rest. You forgot. Marie, Peggy never forgot about you. Keep your mouth shut. She kept a card from you. She she kept it here on her desk. What card? The card you made me for my eighth birthday. Yeah. What does it say then? Happy birthday, Peg. Now you're great and eight. Love him. I. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, I. Harrison Police! Three! No! Henry! Get out of there! Peggy! Ah! We have two wounded, and we're in pursuit of the suspect! Henderson Police! Freeze! Forrest! Leslie! How's Peggy? She's been cut pretty bad, but we're here now. Okay, I think we did it. I'll be okay. I need you to look after Peggy. She needs help. Now, we got here just in the nick of time. Where's Marie? She bolted right as we got here. The police are right on her heels. It won't be long now. It's over, Forrest. Well. Well, well, folks, it was a long night, but we made it we did. together. Yeah. I'm gonna head off to go check on Peggy. This is Ben, Forrest Nash. It's been a, it's been a scream. And it's been a scream. Hey! Oh, there's the credits. Everyone survived. <laughs>